Uh, but yeah, let's see. 1072, flip columns for maximum number of equal rows. Given a matrix consist consisting of 0 and 1s, we may choose any number of columns in the matrix and flip every cell in that row. Flipping a cell changes the value of that cell from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. We turn the maximum number of rows that have all values equal all values equal after some number of numbers of flip. Uh, okay. And then this example, I feel like I've done something similar. Oh, oops, no, don't, no, 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 no. Okay, sorry, whoops. I just thought maybe I've seen it before and I just click on random stuff. <laughs> My bad. Uh, okay. Uh, so N is 300. Uh, what does that mean? I think that means we could just do an N square thing, right? Um, Wait, right? choose any number of columns in the matrix and flip every cell in that column. Okay. And so one, flip one, zero. Both rows have equal values. What does it mean to have a equal value? Flip, uh, have all values equal. Okay, so it's not equal to another row. It's just all rows that are either zeros or ones. Um, right, maybe? Okay. Hey, where did my pre gen template go? Hmm, okay. Um, okay, so yeah, still, I feel like. Um, Yeah, you could brute force this with n squared. Maybe n is it n cube? Uh, let's see. For each row, you go through all of them, and then you have to flip all of them. So maybe that is n cube actually. So maybe you have to be slightly smarter than that. Um, but uh, hmm. So it is binary matrix. Uh, I have some. Uh, right now I'm just thinking whether I could abuse Python's uh, big int <laughs> and then just use a, a 300 digit number but and then just use XO all, all over the place but uh, okay let me think about this right uh, I mean, I think that's still roughly right. Let me. Th I think this is the hmm, interesting case. Hmm. It's proof. I, I think. N equals 300 is one of those like things on the edge where um, where N cube is slightly too slow, especially in Python where like hmm. but Nico is always a little bit weird where I, I don't know if like uh, the test cases are that tough but that said, we shouldn't rely on that then, so I think uh, from that I think uh, so. The input size is going to be n square, um, so you can't do better than that because that's um, because that's you know uh, 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 that that is uh, what you call it because that's your input and you have to look at every cell. So I'm like half in different dots. Uh, you can always make at least one row one. So you low. Low thing is going to be um, thing. So I mean, I think we could actually reduce. Hmm. So I think that uh, okay. So my thoughts are that um, okay. So it doesn't really matter whether something is zero and someone is one. Uh, some number is one. 
um, you basically just want to count the number of um, like so you could hash you could probably just hash the uh, the string of the number and then and then the the, um, the opposite of that and then just do all the counts um, and maybe have to worry a little bit about kind of these things but but because that's the own like uh, the complement and the thing because there's no other ways to get each all row the same so I think that's what I'm going to try to do and that means I only have to hash 300 and each of them costs only O of n so uh, so yeah uh, now I'm thinking slightly whether I could do this slightly better uh, but I guess it's okay. I mean, I could actually use. I could actually use um, what you call it. Uh, a big num in Python to do it. But I think I'm just going to use a string just to kind of keep things slightly easier. But yeah, for row in matrix. Um, okay, and now you, I just want to convert this to a string. And I also want to do the complement. Uh, need a lookup table. But so the so the thing that I'm thinking about right now is um, just I'm a little bit worried about double counting, um, which should maybe no that's okay. We should just I I could do it by normalizing the string. By making sure that the first character is zero, then you don't double count. Okay, I think mean, that that be. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Um, oops. Uh, for x in row uh, actually I, don't, I guess I don't need to create two strings let's have to do like um, complement if uh, false if row sub 0 is equal to 1 complement is equal to true uh, and then now if um, If cup, if I don't want to do double negative, okay. So let's just do this inefficient thing. If it's complement, then just do string of this one else uh, x, and then now we could counter dot. Uh, what's it? Just add. I think I, I, I'm not a big fan of this autocomplete that pops up thing. It's just distracting. But anyway, um, oh, I guess it, it's a. Um, something like that, and then now we just return the max of counter dot values, something like that. You put in the test cases while the the other things are running. Take a look, okay, and try again <laughs> on the other test cases. Um, Okay, let's try submitting it, maybe. Maybe I have an off by one though. So I should double check stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit slower because I use a string as a hash. I think I could have done other things maybe. Like, and you could ch convert this to a, a real hashing function and hope that there's no con uh, flex or double hashing or something like that. But uh, well, generally that should be okay. So yeah, uh, I, I don't think I explained this one at all to be honest. So I'm going to try a little bit. Uh, I think I'm, I was running a little bit on intuition, so that's why I wanted to verify uh, that this works before I kind of explain it. Because sometimes I feel like one of those Evo villains in a movie uh, where like I explain everything and it turns out to be wrong. I'm like, well, <laughs> uh, so that, okay. So this one I feel a little bit better about then. Okay, so my, um, hmm. so I, I made a couple of uh, optimizations as I was coding it. Um, 
So I'll, I'll kind of go over this farm. It's actually, uh, I mean, I dig this farm. I like this farm. It's fun. It's fun as long as you're not doing it on an interview, rather. Because uh, an interview, like, these are kind of very ad hoc -y and very stressful. And, like, you also wonder whether that has, like, given less relevance to uh, your real day, uh, your everyday job or whatever. Uh, but that said, uh, it is a fun puzzle problem. So, uh, so maybe... And it does deal with kind of uh, hashing a little bit, kind of hand wavy, but uh, but yeah. But so my my thing was thinking that well, uh, how do you make so for each row? Um, for, so I start from the premise that for each row, uh, you can only make it all zeros or all ones two different ways, right? Which is to make all the zeros one so that they're all the same, or make all the ones zeros. Um, so those are the two ways you can do it. Um, and I don't think I, I mean, I actually, now that I said it out loud, it seem, seems simpler than, uh, than when I was thinking it, But because in my mind, I was thinking about it a little bit more complicated. Um, but because of this forcing function, uh, and because you have to flip every column in every row, uh, the only way that um, other rows match this current row um, is if they also have the same number of uh, presses uh, from from the from the same columns, right? Uh, and that means that they have all the ones in the same place, or they're they're exact complement, which means zeros in the same place, right? So, like for example, if you have someone like eh, I'm just pressing randomly, someone like this, and I don't know, just some other random number. Uh, so these two will never match because to get this one on the bottom to be all zeros, you need to press this one, which already you know, mix the top and possible and so forth. I think that part is a little bit obvious. Um, and then the other, uh, maybe I should have used a shorter test string. But then the other case is, the only way they match is obvious if they match exactly, then that's a trivial case. But also if they have the opposite because, um, or the complement as I call it, uh, because then if you convert uh, this one to all zeros, then this one will be all ones and so forth, right? Um, so I was going to just hash everything uh, both the number and its complement uh, into a lookup table, kind of similar to what I did. But I was worried about double counting, so I could, because I worried that like if I put this uh, and this, then like maybe I count twice and have to divide by two or something fancy or funky. I wasn't sure about, but uh, but what I end up uh, doing and how I implement with this complement was that um, uh, I make sure that the first. Um, so I only hash, so my, my hashing function is just literally converting it to a string. You could do better, you could probably, I mean, I, my submission time is kind of terrible, so you could optimize it away. You could even use stuff like, and, and you know, you in, you know, in a lot of languages, you have this idea of like string buffer and stuff like this, so you don't create literally hundreds, or in my case, maybe hundreds square <laughs> of, of strings, uh, which is probably some of the running time and the memory and stuff like this. Uh, the memory actually run, but... Um, but yeah, but what I did was I actually did. I think I had a little bit of a tangent, but what I did was I normalized it into all the all the things to start with zero, uh, which is what I do with this complement. So this first number is always going to be zero for, uh, as a result of how I implemented it. So uh, so that and then because of that, there's only one way to for the rest of the uh, rows to follow through. So that's the way I kind of did it. And I just take the max of all the values. Uh, yeah. That's mostly it, I think. Pretty fun problem. Um, I end up taking about 13, 14 minutes, uh, which is probably a little bit long for the medium, but I was also rambling for some of it. Um, yeah, over an okay problem. I, it's a little bit ad hoc -y for an interview, but I could kind of see it in some of the uh, fancier tech places. So eh, I don't know, but I would still f say that, I mean, you know, like, as my shtick is usually to say that, uh, you know, you should definitely study for things that are more obviously impactful, like the binary searches and the sorting and the, uh, and, uh, I don't know, human heap and data structure and stuff like this. I think this is for ad hoc problems. I f think like that's like one level on top of that where like, okay, if you're comfortable with everything then maybe play around these things. Uh, but before then, like, you know, what, like, it's like studying for quantum mechanics when you're trying to pass physics 101 or something, right? So it doesn't really make sense, right? Uh, so 
that's my take on this poem. Uh, cool. But overall, I mean, I, as a brain teaser type thing, like thinking poem, I, I actually do dig this one. Uh, there are a lot of like forcing intuition there that uh, it's a little bit uh, tricky to um, uh, articulate sometimes, but 